I think the legacy of Stuart Udall will be that he is going to be regarded as one of the premier environmentalists of the 20th century, ranking with Rachel Carson, David Brower, Theodore Roosevelt, and Franklin Roosevelt. And I think he will be remembered for giving impetus to something that's called the environmental movement. People wonder where his passion came from, and I really think that it came from being from a pioneer family. He was out of doors all the time, milking the cows, plowing the fields, doing those kinds of things, and had this relationship with the land from being very young. I think we were all vociferous readers, but Stuart was probably the most reader of all of us. He, he was a smart guy. The University of Arizona was segregated. African Americans could not eat in the cafeterias. The city of Tucson was segregated. And so Stuart and Mo decided to try to change that. They were both at heart reformers, both at heart civil rights advocates. So he made a decision uh, that uh, for the summer of 62, uh, the National Park Service would, in fact, uh, have uh, young African Americans uh, in its workforce. So I was selected for a seasonal range job at Grand Teton National Park and uh, stayed with the National Park Service until I stepped down on uh, January 19, 2001 as the 15th director of the National Park Service. What we felt across Indian country was that Stuart was there with us. It was as we could see Stuart standing by our side. We could see Stuart in our circles. We could see Stuart in our ceremonies. Stuart was with us in heart, mind, and spirit. He changed the perception of Americans uh, about the meaning of the out of doors and the public lands. And he brought that to the department because the Interior Department had really become a development agency. There wasn't much of a conservation ethic. You'd all worried about a Philistine class that saw only dollar signs when they looked at a landscape. Uh, that he thought Americans were all about the profit motive of capitalism, the gross national product, and they were willing to destroy America's natural beauty. Historically, there has always been local opposition, regional opposition, state opposition to the creation of new national parks. This is because people saw the federal government as an intruder and they wanted to control and do it the way they wanted to do it. But if that had been done, you wouldn't have had national parks or national forests. He brought in uh, Carl Sandburg. He brought in all kinds of artists, musicians, poets to perform and helped other cabinet members support these financially, which they sometimes resented. You know, they worked all day and yet they were supposed to go to these damn cultural events too. And not only that, help sponsor them financially. Frost was a poet who wanted to be a statesman. He thought he had all these great political ideas and that people should listen to him. And Stewart was a statesman who wanted to be a poet. And that was kind of what brought them, you know, together. I was pregnant and I was pretty sick. And he was on the phone, so we barely had a conversation. The one real question that he asked me was, and I'll never forget it, he said, those North Cascades, should they be a national park? And he had another phone call and that was it. He didn't offer me a job. But a few weeks later, his secretary called. Where are you? The boss is looking for you. He's having a meeting. Oh, I didn't know I was to be there. Well, come on. Stuart Udall lived in a very simple way. He wasn't attracted to material items. 
He traveled with a briefcase, and whatever he needed, like a change of shirt, would go into the briefcase with his papers, but he did not need luggage. He convinced Lady Bird to go on this political trip with him to states like Wyoming and Montana, and he really converted her to an environmentalist and really launched her beautification campaign. Let's beautify American cities. Let's beautify uh, the American countryside. Let's get rid of billboards and junkyards and all this trash that we see. Let's make America beautiful again. And he also understood that by recruiting Lady Bird, if she was for it, Lyndon was going to be for it because he seldom disagreed with anything that Lady Bird wanted. Stuart loaned me to her. It was my birthday, and we came into the Lincoln bedroom upstairs. I happened to be sitting by the window, and we could hear singing outside. Mrs. Johnson said, what are they doing? And I looked out the curtain, and I said, they're on their knees in the snow, Mrs. Johnson, and they're singing, we shall overcome. She and I looked at each other. Tears came down her face. My grandfather wanted each person to develop a relationship with the out of doors, where you don't see another human being, and all you can see and hear is, is natural. The world and, and Mother Nature is so much bigger than anything that any of us have, have built and put on top of it. And I think that he wanted each person to be able to experience the, the liberation of that. I feel like the politics of beauty is still there and it's up to us to keep it alive. I mean, I was raised by two parents who felt I needed to be outdoors and I was surrounded by beauty. Every weekend we were in a stream or on a mountain trail somewhere. We have to make sure that we are giving children opportunities to surround themselves with that beauty outdoors so they grow up to realize that it's up to them to protect these spaces. The beauty of my words, the beauty of my presence, the beauty of everything I do, the things I see, the lives I touch, may all of these be part of the, the beauty. Whose river was this? You say it ran freely. Blue was its color, I've seen blue in some pictures, and I... It was 188 miles, it was 188 miles of, of beautiful canyons, it's now a reservoir. It was the most beautiful canyon system in the world. The beauty of these side canyons, they were magical places. Every, every turn had a different feel, petroglyphs on the side, and just this beautiful sandstone sculpture. And my dad, I just remember watching my dad and he started to cry. It was just a huge loss. This was something that he felt really passionate about. He, he thought there had been huge injustice. These miners were down in mines that were contaminated by radon daughters and they were going to get significant amounts of lung cancer and did get significant amounts of lung cancer. And so my dad thought the government was at fault. Uranium mining on the Navajo Nation has had a real negative impact on Navajo people. I'm from Laguna Pueblo, and uh, we were home to the largest open pit uranium mine in the world for 30 years. They just left this open sore in the ground uh, with uranium blowing around for years. Stewart had Lee to rely upon as somebody to bounce ideas and thoughts and stuff like that off of. She was the rock of our family. You know, she's the one, kind of the glue that kept us all together. 
she didn't really live in our dad's shadow. You know, she, she, she had her own legacy that she built for herself. After Lee passed away in 2001, a huge light went out for Stuart. He was a huge student of history, and he would read as much history as he possibly could. He would chide me because I love to read fiction. And he said, why are you wasting your time on fiction? And I said, why are you wasting your time on history? <laughs> the phone rang. His caregiver said, Stuart wants you to come by if you can. And I went up to the house, and there was Stuart in bed on his way out. And we looked at each other, and we had talked about death a lot over many years. And uh, he said, well, here it is, I'm about to die. It's been sad to me that more Americans don't realize that Stuart L. Udall was one of the incredible conservation leaders that the world has ever produced. And we're only now still catching up with some of the, his vision and uh, wisdom and insight. A lot of people might think of his great political legacy with regard to what he did for the national parks and the environment. But in retrospect, after all of these years, I think that his greatest legacy of all was his family, his kids, because they're all beautiful people.